So jumping back into candida and histamine intolerance, candida as a driver of histamine intolerance, we're talking about mast cell involvement today and we have so much data, enough data to be conclusive that candida can trigger this mast cell degranulation flood the body full of histamine, and then you wind up again with that histamine intolerance. So we're gonna get into what mast cells are, we're gonna be talking about some of the data and some of the science that connect candida and mast cells, and some tests that I'll commonly recommend as well. So first off, mast cells, what the heck are they? If you've never heard of them, mast cells, M-A-S-T cells, they are your sentinel white blood cells. They are looking for problems in the body. They do a couple other things, I mean a bunch of other things. They're involved in tissue repair and angiogenesis, you know, the formation of new blood vessels. But today we were talking about them as these immune kind of activation sentinel cells. And so when they are triggered, when they see a problem, they degranulate and they release pro-inflammatory messengers, they're called cytokines, that flood the body, they're telling the immune system there's something wrong that we need to get on top of, and then the immune system reacts to that messenger molecule and again mounts an immune response. So it is one of the first steps in this pro-inflammatory pathway, this pro-inflammatory cascade that is looking ultimately to resolve a problem in the body. And again, we've got great data, we're gonna cover it in a second, that candida is one of those triggers that causes mast cells to degranulate and to liberate and release all that histamine. It's basically like a histamine switch. So if you've got a candida overgrowth in your gut, it's that switch to the immune system to liberate and to release that histamine into the body. And so not such a surprise, mast cells are involved in a bunch of autoimmune conditions. I mean, the ones that we have really good data on are autoimmune conditions like rheumatoid arthritis, type one diabetes, and multiple sclerosis.